Welcome to EM Cases Rapid Reviews, where we review the take-home points from the EM Cases main episode podcasts so you can ace your exams and take stellar care of your patients. Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Taryn Lloyd, and today I want to review episode 99 on Lyme disease. This topic is originally from a podcast that was taken at EMU 2017. It seems like I'm hearing about Lyme disease everywhere these days. Maybe it's just in the tabloids more and more, but it is true that Lyme is spreading around North America and Europe, and we should now consider it endemic in many areas. The incidence is rising, and it might be much higher than we thought as reported. The reason why I want to highlight it today is because early diagnosis is key to preventing disseminated Lyme disease, and treatment of acute Lyme disease is very effective. All right, so Lyme disease 101. Here we're going to cover the where and how of Lyme disease, acute versus disseminated disease, how to make the diagnosis, and finally we'll cover how to treat Lyme disease, including the role of prophylaxis. Where should you be thinking about Lyme disease? It turns out pretty much across Canada we have many pockets at risk, particularly around southern Ontario and notably Ottawa, but you can see here that almost all of our provinces have pockets of risky business. How do people contract Lyme disease? Lyme disease is spread by bites, or rather feeds, from this little guy here, the black-legged Exodes tick. Even in its nymph form, it can spread the disease, and clocking in at one millimeter in size, it can very easily go undetected on your body. This tick locally carries a spirochete bacterium called Borrelia burgdorferi. Okay, now I feel like I have this little nymph crawling all over my body. Let's move on to characterizing the disease. Three quarters of patients with acute Lyme disease present with a rash, fever, and flu-like illness in the spring or summer months. So next time, think of acute Lyme disease when a patient presents with a flu-like illness in these seasons. The rash of acute Lyme disease is most often the classic erythema migrans rash that you see here on the left, the classic bullseye type rash. Don't forget that it can also be an erythematous patch with a central scab that you see here on the right, or simply a rash that looks more like an erythematous patch with blurred margins. It can seem pretty generic to me, but if you're looking for it in the right clinical context, it may just be the clue that you need. Disseminated Lyme disease, on the other hand, presents a little differently. It's a much more serious and refractory illness. I want to highlight four ways disseminated Lyme disease can present. The first is with a bilateral seventh nerve palsy. It can also present as aseptic meningitis in the summer, or it can present as heart block with really long PR intervals, as in over 300 milliseconds. This can be known as Lyme carditis. Disseminated Lyme disease can also present with acute monoarthritis with large effusions of the large joints. Oh yeah, and before we leave the topic of heart blocks, if a patient suspected of having Lyme disease has a first-degree heart block on their ECG, consider admission as many of these patients will go on to develop third-degree heart block as shown here. Okay, so you've kept these helpful hints in mind and you suspect that your next patient may have Lyme disease. What next? How do you make the diagnosis? Testing for Borrelia earlier in the acute disease state will be negative. Borrelia is a slow-growing bacterium and does not trigger the IgM or IgG response that the assay requires until much later. However, to prevent disseminated Lyme disease, treat on spec and assure that the patient has follow-up testing done in two weeks. For confirmatory testing, often later on in the clinical presentation, the CDC has a nice graphic shown here of how to make that diagnosis. Essentially, in the case of disseminated Lyme disease, Tests should be positive and include immunoassays and IgM and IgG western blots. Keep in mind that there is no test of cure. Once a patient is positive, they will often be positive for life. This is particularly challenging when dealing with post-treatment Lyme syndrome, which can leave patients feeling sick for months to years after the infection has cleared. Okay, that's all fair enough. But let's say that you have a patient that comes in with a bullseye rash and a perfect story for a preceding tick bite. How should you treat this patient? First, if the tick is still in place, grab the tick by the head with surgical forceps as shown here. Take out as much of the tick as possible. Then, the treatment for acute Lyme disease is doxycycline. 
at least 10 days of treatment, but can be up to three weeks. Check your local guidelines. If your patient is eight years or younger, treat with amoxicillin or cefuroxime. And in the case where you are not sure if you're dealing with a simple cellulitis or a true erythema migraines rash, treat with amoxicillin and clavulanic acid. It treats both. If you find yourself in the situation of treating disseminated Lyme disease, the basic treatment is IV ceftriaxone or penicillin G. If the patient is presenting with Lyme arthritis, consider doxycycline at the appropriate dose. And finally, maybe the most common scenario you may find yourself in on your next shift is where you have a patient that maybe is coming in with having a tick bite or maybe a tick that's embedded in them, but no other convincing evidence of Lyme disease. Overall, if the tick has been present for less than 24 hours, the risk of developing Lyme disease is extremely low. However, if the tick has been present for more than 24 hours, or the duration of the contact has been unknown, prophylactic options include watchful waiting, treating with a single dose of 200 mg of doxycycline, or you can treat with a full course of 14 days of doxycycline or 10 days of moxicillin in patients under the age of 8. All right, everybody. Well, hopefully that quick primer on Lyme disease has given you a little bit of background information for your next shift. In summary, we covered the where and how of Lyme disease, acute versus disseminated disease, how to make the diagnosis, and how and when to treat Lyme disease. That's all for now, folks. For the full podcast, other foam resources, as well as all of our references, please visit emergencymedicinecases.com. Until next time.